This is linearity example number two. Formally prove whether or not each system is linear. Here we have three systems and we need to formally prove whether or not each system is linear. Well, we need to establish what's called the additivity property as well as the scaling property. The additivity property says that a system operating on the sum of two input signals x1 and x2 can also be written as the system operating on each of these input signals and then add it together. The scaling property says that we can take a scaled version of an input, operate on that, and it's the same thing as first operating on the input and then scaling it. We can combine both the additivity and scaling properties into this proof structure. Here we have the two instances of the system operating on two different signals x1 and x2. Here we have the scaled versions that are being added together to form y a of n. In a similar way we can pre-scale and then add, pass that through the system and form y b. Then we ask the, ourselves the question is y a equal to y b and if so we say that system t is linear. Alright let's move on to the detailed solution. For system t4 we have x of minus n. We'll begin with our proof structure and we are trying to establish whether or not y a is equal to y b for all n. Let's pass x1 through the system. This would give us x1 of minus n. I'll scale this by a1 and then do the same thing with x2. Pass that through the system. We have x2 of minus n. Multiply that by a2. Sum those together and produce the output. Now on our pre-scale and sum technique we have x1 times a1 and x2 times a2. We add those together and use that as the input to our system t. t operates by changing the sign of each time index. We have minus n in each case. Now we compare that to our results for y a. We see that they are in fact the same, therefore we conclude that system t4 is linear. Let's move on to system T5. This system says take the input x and multiply it by the time step n. We'll pass x1 through our system. That gives us n times x1 of n. And then multiply that by the scale factor a1. Similarly, we would have a2 n x2 of n. And we add those two together. We form the new input, pass it through our system, and we have n times our input signal. Now comparing those two, we find that n can be distributed across the sum. We can also interchange the order of n and the a coefficients. And we do a comparison here and find out that y a and y b are in fact equal therefore T5 is linear. And our third system, T6. We sum from k equals 0 up to the current time step n and we're summing the values x of k. So as before, let's pass x1 through our system, multiply it by a1. Same thing for x2. And add those two together. We form our pre-scaled and summed version of these two inputs and present that to the input, or present that as the input to our system t. Our system then will operate on this entire composite input.
Now to compare these two, let's expand this summation a bit. We realize that the sum can be distributed across these terms a1, x1, and we can also bring the a coefficients out front. When we compare, we find that ya equals yb for all n, therefore this system t6 is linear. And that takes care of our example.